Hi there. I hear you're having some trouble sleeping. Is that right? Alrighty. Well, it's lovely to meet you. My name is Holly and I am a sleep therapist. I specialize in people who are having lots of difficulties with their sleep and we can run through your kind of sleep routine and see if we can get you sleeping better and longer, okay? Okay. Before we start, can I offer you a drink at all? Maybe a cup of tea to get you nice and relaxed? You like a cup? Well, it just so happens that I have one here and ready to go. Lots of my clients who come here enjoy having a cup of tea. Get some nice and sleepy. It's just chamomile tea, so there's no caffeine in it. It should get you nice. And relaxed. There you go, just pop that beside you. There we are. Alrighty. Let me just open up a file here. Today I'm going to be typing down some information about you so I can learn a little bit more about your sleep patterns, okay? Perfect. Alright. Do you spell it for me? Mm hmm Yep. Lovely. What's your date of birth, please? Okay. Would I be able to grab your email? Mm hmm like you can sign up for our newsletter and it just provides you with tips related to sleep and how to sleep better and the latest science revolving sleep and connections with the brain does that sound like something you'd like to sign up for you would okay well, let me just add you to our mailing list okay Would you be able to tell me a little bit about your current sleeping patterns? Okay. So for example, what time do you try to get to sleep each night? Do you have a time or is it whenever you feel sleepy? Mm-hmm. So you try to go to bed at about 11, 11.30, okay, but you often get stuck on your phone, yeah, yeah, with the doomsday scrolling on your phone, I completely understand, okay, so then what time do you think you actually put the phone down and start trying to get to, um, get to sleep? Mm-hmm. you can get stuck until okay it can be midnight or 1am got you 
home? Do you work? Study? You have a family? Okay, you work. Sure. Is that full time work? Okay. And what time do you have to get up in the morning to go to work? Hmm. Okay. Okay, so you usually get up at six in the morning. Yeah. And how do you feel when you wake up in the mornings? Are you often very tired, groggy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what normally wakes you up in the morning? Okay, so you might have a shower and some coffee. Mm -hmm. But even then, you're still feeling drained throughout the day. Okay, right. Yeah. And you find that it's hard to focus at work. Okay. And how long would you say that it fall asleep roughly each night just like a rough guess would you say does it feel like you fall asleep quickly does it feel like it takes a long time mm -hmm. okay okay so you can still sometimes take up to an hour to fall asleep mm -hmm. and why is that do you reckon mm -hmm. Okay, so you're just finding it a bit hard to switch off your brain. Yeah, yeah, it's busy and worried with lots of thoughts. Okay. Alrighty. So from what you're telling me there, you're going to sleep. You're not actually putting your phone down and trying to sleep until sometimes midnight. Um, and or one in the morning, okay? Yeah. And you have to wake up 6 a.m. five days of the week, correct? Okay. So realistically, you are, oh, and you've also mentioned that it can take you up to an hour to fall asleep. So, in worst case scenario, you don't start trying to sleep until one in the morning. It could take you an hour, so that's two in the morning. And then you might only end up getting four hours worth of actual sleep in an evening. It's not a lot when it's put into perspective like that. I know. I know that's right. And do you know how many hours of sleep you're supposed to be getting each night? <laughs> well, lots of people do say that they're fine on six hours of sleep and even some uh, media articles say that as well and it always really bothers me because it's simply not the case it's just not true and according to research evidence actually suggests that we need seven to nine hours of sleep and by seven to nine hours of sleep, what I really mean is seven to nine hours of sleep opportunity, okay? So that's if you put your phone down and you have eight hours until you have to get up for work. And, you know, it might actually equal, you know, six to seven point five hours of actual sleep that you're getting. But really making sure that you have that seven to nine hours of sleep opportunity. And eight to nine is the ideal. Seven's really the minimum there, but you're still not really reaping all the benefits that you could if you slept more. Exactly. And the kind of people that are saying that six hours of sleep is enough, usually what that means is they're on giving themselves six hours of sleep opportunity so in reality it takes them a while to fall 
sleep and it might equal closer to only 4.5 to 6 hours of actual sleep. So when it's put into perspective like that, it really isn't enough sleep that you're getting. Yeah, exactly. What do you know about sleep and why it's so important to get that seven to nine hours each night? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'll feel tired the next day. Sleep is truly just the most, one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves other than, you know, it goes hand in hand with our basic necessities, right? We need air to breathe. We need water to drink. We need food to eat. And we need sleep. It is one of the pillars of health and it is so vital for everything that we do. And you know, a good night's sleep consistently so it equals a longer lifespan, it enhances your memory, improves your immune system, it lowers your chance of health complications as well, such as heart attack, stroke, diabetes, and it even prevents the chances of developing Alzheimer's. It's been shown that there is a connection between lack of sleep and developing Alzheimer's. And there's still research sort of being involved with that, but I find that really interesting too. And also, getting a good night's sleep is so important for our mental health. And it lowers our food cravings, which means... You know, it helps us to reach our fitness goals. If you're trying really hard to get in shape or build muscle or, you know, whatever your fitness goals may be, having a bad night's sleep is going to undo any of the work, any of the gains you're trying to make. Exactly. And this one I like as well. According to research, a good night's sleep even makes you more attractive. I didn't make that up, okay? That is real science. Exactly, so if that's not a good motivator, <laughs> on top of all the other things, that's just icing on the cake, really. <laughs> Alrighty, so I just sort of explored a little bit about how many hours of sleep you need to get each night. And also some of the benefits of, yeah, benefits of good sleep. I just wanted to see if you have a little bit of a routine before bedtime. So is there anything you do to get yourself ready consistently every single night for sleep? Okay. Okay, could you walk me through that a little bit? Yeah. So you typically have a shower before bed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what time? Okay. Yeah, sometimes you do a workout. Okay. What time would you do a workout? Okay, so probably like an hour. Brushing your teeth, you brush your teeth every night. Okay. Same both nights, but sometimes things get hectic and you might skip a bit. Okay. Alrighty. Do you ever do anything like read a book before you go to sleep? Listen to 
relaxed in the music um, or watch any kind of relaxing videos to help calm you down okay no but you are usually watching videos on your phone okay and also watching TV is there TV in your bedroom? get to sleep or do you go straight from the screen to sleep? Okay, straight from the screen to sleep. Okay. Yeah, so research does suggest for that having giving your eyes a break from the screen before bed. Um you're more likely to fall asleep and you know better for your um circadian rhythm and your melatonin levels. Do you take any um do you take any medication to help you sleep? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take sleeping pills sometimes already. Yeah. It's not sleeping pills is that it's not really considered, um, even though it might help you to fall asleep, it's not giving you the proper amount of, um, REM and not REM sleep. It sort of messes with, um, you know, your brain chemistry in the night and you're not actually waking up feeling rested. It's more... Yeah, and you wake up feeling, you know, groggy and tired sometimes, I bet. Yeah, so it's not considered um, as effective as sleeping without medication. So maybe that's something we could explore about um, what can you just do naturally as part of your routine um, to assist you. Yeah, exactly, without the medication. wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day? No? Okay. Could you tell me what time it's... Okay, so on the weekend you're more likely to sleep in. Okay, on two... At what time might you sleep in till? Okay, so sometimes till 11 in the morning. much for giving me that information about your sleep schedule. It gives me a really good idea about some of the things that, um, you know, that you are doing good and some of the things that we could improve and shape um, so that we can come up with a bit of a formulated plan about how we're going to help you sleep. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I was hoping if you don't mind, I would like read a page of a book for you and it's from a book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker and I strongly recommend this book. I have found it very very helpful in learning about sleep, how we sleep, why we sleep. And it really has given me all this knowledge that I have now to share with you. And what I really like is that right at the end, it has this section called the 12 tips for healthy sleep. And it gives you a list of 12 things you can do that can help you get a better night's rest. And I would really like to read 
all of these to you if you don't mind. And then for our next session, we can go over what ones might be best suited for you, what ones might not be. Um, everyone's situation is different and not everything is always applicable. But encompassing as many of these as you can into your schedule is going to do wonders for your sleep. Is to stick to a sleep schedule. Go to bed and wake up at the same time each day. As creatures of habit, people have a hard time adjusting to changes in sleep patterns. Sleeping later on weekends will not fully make up for a lack of sleep during the week, and it will make it harder to wake up early on Monday morning. Set an alarm for bedtime. Often, we set an alarm for when it's time to wake up, but fail to do so for when it's time to go to sleep. If there is only one piece of advice you remember to take from these 12 tips, these should be it. Number two, exercise is great, but not too late in the day. Try to exercise at least 30 minutes on most days but not later than two to three hours before your bedtime. Number three, avoid caffeine and nicotine. Coffee, colas, certain teas and chocolate contain the stimulant caffeine and its effects can take as long as eight hours to fully wear off. Therefore, a cup of coffee in the late afternoon can make it hard for you to fall asleep at night. Nicotine is also a stimulant, often causing smokers to sleep only very lightly. In addition, smokers often wake up too early in the morning because of nicotine withdrawal. Number four, avoid alcoholic drinks before bed. Having a nightcap or alcoholic beverage before sleep might help you relax but heavy use robs you of REM sleep, keeping you in the lighter stages of sleep. Heavy alcohol ingestion also may contribute to impairment in breathing at night time. You also tend to wake up in the middle of the night when the effects of the alcohol have worn off. Number five. Avoid large meals and beverages late at night. A light snack is okay, but a large meal can cause indigestion, which interferes with sleep. Drinking too many fluids at night can also cause frequent awakenings to urinate. Number six possible, avoid medicines that delay or disrupt your sleep. Some commonly prescribed heart, blood pressure or asthma medications, as well as some over-the-counter and herbal remedies for coughs, colds or allergies can disrupt your sleep patterns. If you have trouble sleeping, talk to your healthcare provider or pharmacist to see whether any drugs you're taking might be contributing to your insomnia and ask whether they can be taken at other times during the day or early in the evening. Number seven, don't take naps after 3 p.m. Naps can help make up for lost sleep, but late afternoon naps can make it harder to fall asleep at night. Number eight, relax before bed. Don't overschedule your day so that there is no time left for unwinding. A relaxing activity such as reading or listening to music should be a part of your bedtime ritual. Number nine, take a hot bath before bed. A hot bath 
before bed or shower too. The drop in body temperature after getting out of the bath or shower may help you feel sleepy and the bath can help you relax and slow down so you're more ready to sleep. Number 10. Dark bedroom, cool bedroom, gadget free bedroom. Get rid of anything in your bedroom that might distract you from sleep, such as noises, night lights, uncomfortable bed, warm temperatures. You sleep better if the temperature in your room is kept on the cool side. A TV, phone or computer can be distracting and deprive you of needed sleep. Having a comfortable mattress and a pillow can help promote a good night's sleep. Individuals who have insomnia often watch the clock. Turn the clock's face out of view so you don't worry about the time while trying to fall asleep. And let's be real, looking at the time and counting how much sleep we're going to have for the next day is not helpful. It's not helpful and very Number 11. Have the right sunlight exposure. Daylight is key to regulating daily sleep patterns. Try to get outside in natural sunlight for at least 30 minutes each day. If possible, wake up with the sun or use very bright lights in the morning. Sleep experts recommend that if you have problems falling asleep, you should get an hour of exposure to morning sunlight and turn down the lights before bedtime. And the last one is number 12. Don't lie in bed awake. If you find yourself still awake after staying in bed for more than 20 minutes or so and you're starting to feel anxious, or worried. Get up and do some relaxing activity until you feel sleepy. The anxiety of not being able to sleep can make it harder to fall asleep. And that was all of them. How did you feel about those? Okay, so some you really like and some you think is not as simple or easy to do. Yeah, I agree with that. Some things are easier to said, said than done. But I think there's still a few key takeaway points here. And when you come back for our next session, we can formulate a bit more of a plan about what will suit you and your sleeping needs. You'd like to come back next week for your next appointment? Sure thing, I'll just quickly book you in. Okay. What time works best for you? A 4 p.m. Okay. Alright, well, I'll see you next Thank you so much.